Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather, 15th day of August 2020, about halfway through the month now. And I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, uh, on the fire danger chart here, we've got uh, areas of extreme fire danger uh, from the Cusquam Valley on down into northeast Bristol Bay and uh, areas of high fire danger, as you can see out there over the western and southwestern Yukon Delta, Nunavak Island, some scattered areas of high fire danger, one area there southwest of Tanana, and some areas over the southeast Kobuk Valley, and uh, high to very high fire danger across the Susitna Valley, and some extreme fire danger in the Madnuska Valley. It doesn't show up too well there, but there is, uh, due to the windy conditions, got some extreme fire danger in Madnuska Valley, and actually also in the Susitna Valley. And as a result of the winds and uh, very warm temperatures, the red flag warnings that went out yesterday are still out for uh, already in effect here at noon Saturday, and they'll be out until 10 p.m. this evening. And of course, again, that's the Manuska Valley, Anchorage Bowl, Western Kenai Peninsula, Middle Kuskokwim Valley, and interior Bristol Bay. And that's uh, due to the winds, uh, quite gusty today, um, up to uh, 30, or up to, uh, let's see, 40 miles an hour at uh, uh, King Salmon, or I'm sorry, not at King Salmon, but gusts to uh, 25 to 35 miles an hour across Bristol Bay today with uh, platinum seeing a gust of 40 miles an hour and also some pretty gusty winds as high as uh, 35 miles an hour at Palmer earlier today. Those have calmed down a little bit, but 20 to 30, 35 mile an hour winds report across the Kenai Peninsula, as well as uh, West Anchorage today and some areas of the Susitna Valley with the uh, temperatures at Big Lake rising to 82 degrees this afternoon. So moving on. No other watches, warnings, or advisories out for the state with uh, pretty good conditions across all areas. Weak system out over the Bering Sea. And uh, satellite imagery showing the system that brought a pretty good shot of rain into the southeast coast over the last uh, 24 hours, especially over the southern areas. But uh, pretty good rainfall amounts across the entire stretch of the area there from Yakutat on down to Dixon Entrance, where, uh, let's see, Petersburg picked up about or just under an inch and a half of rain in the last 24 hours, while Ketchikan had a little over eight tenths of an inch of uh, precipitation. And Juneau had two thirds of an inch of rain. And uh, during the day today, only 700s falling at Yakutat after the heavier rain uh, overnight. And up over the eastern interior there, Copper River Basin, Wrangell Mountains mostly, eastern Copper River Basin, a few scattered showers today especially over the eastern Alaska range in the Besna, Northway, Toke area, picking up anywhere from 500 to maybe 1,500 hundredths of an inch of precipitation at most. There are some lingering showers in that area. You can also see lingering clouds there over uh, Prince William Sound and uh, western Copper River Basin, as well as areas up the eastern interior there, all the way to the Arctic coast. becomes a little more widespread over the north slope there, but uh, precipitation pretty sparse with those clouds and clear skies with uh, downsloping winds pushing temperatures in the lower 80s across the southern Susitna Valley today. Otherwise, uh, mid to upper 70s seen over a wide area of interior Alaska, central interior areas out to the west, down into Kodiak Island, northwest winds uh, 20, 30 miles an hour, pushed temperature up to 75 degrees this afternoon and about the same occurring in northeast Bristol Bay. And uh, on the chart, you can see some clouds here over the yukon Kuskokwim Delta of the low variety, low clouds, and that extends long and off the coast. There are high pressure light winds uh, under the ridge axis itself over the Perbolofs and Eastern Bering Sea. St. Lawrence Island, a little breezy today, uh, but there were a few clouds around and clear skies for the most part for the Bering Strait, the Chukchi Sea there, northwest uh, interior areas, Noatak Valley, and then scattered showers developing in the afternoon, not really as uh, 
ominous as I have it looking there, more isolated than what the green shaded areas show. But there was some shower activity with the clouds there, but pretty light as of 3 p.m. this afternoon. Again, with the heaviest rain occurring over the southeast coast of that slow moving but weakening frontal system there. Low pressure kind of hung up off the north coast, uh, weakening slowly, and actually three low centers out over the northeast Pacific and the Gulf of Alaska, bringing the rain, as I mentioned, uh, over an inch to Petersburg in the last 24 hours. System out in the west there, bringing windy conditions over the western Bering Sea, uh, minimum gales out there with small craft advisory level winds along in advance of the front there for the central Aleutians today. With, uh, rainfall not as heavy as with the one pushing into the panhandle. ADAC in the last 24 hours had about two tenths of an inch of precipitation there with some uh, warm front moisture spreading into Atka, but uh, not bad, especially the south side of the eastern Aleutians. Mostly sunny skies, nice day for the Alaska Peninsula, low clouds on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, but clear skies south side. Sand Point uh, on up to Chignik, and again, Kodiak Island, most of Bristol Bay in the sunshine today, as well as the Seward Peninsula areas. And for tonight, that uh, Bering Sea front will push eastward and keep rain over the Aleutians. That'll begin to become more intermittent and lighter for ADAC toward morning as that front edges its way eastward. And small craft advisory level winds with the strongest winds with the system will remain over the uh, central and northwest Bering Sea over the gradients tight as it presses, presses up against that high pressure ridge over the eastern Bering Sea. And the front's going to have a weakening effect on that ridge, and the ridge is going to have a weakening effect on that front. So both of those systems will be tending to uh, well weaken here over the next 24 hours. But high pressure ridging all the way up to off the western Arctic coasts, that means light winds, and that means low clouds and fog could become rather widespread or a good possibility anywhere from the eastern Arctic coast across the Chukchi Sea down to St. Lawrence Island, all the eastern Bering Sea, Aleutians, and into western Bristol Bay. And Kodiak Island stays clear for tonight, as well as much of the interior areas. Winds diminishing, areas that had the uh, gustiest winds today will be coming down overnight tonight. Stay a little breeze through the Alaska Peninsula, but generally a decrease in those winds. Chance of showers, eastern and north slope, maybe Brooks Range to Arctic Village, and some lingering showers uh, over the eastern and southeast interior, Copper River Basin, mostly around the Wrangell Mountains up to the eastern Alaska Range. Risk of a shower over the Talkeetan is, but probably won't amount to much. And rain continues over the southern southeast coast, probably not as heavy as it was, but general area of light rain there with that load just off the coast becomes, uh, but conditions become more showery and more scattered. Uh, over the northern areas coming isolated for the eastern North Gulf Coast. And taking a look at tomorrow, Sunday, uh, low pressure finally moving inland there, but a trough and some moisture streaming northward. Good subtly jet aloft there uh, keeps bringing moisture in to the southern southeast coast, but it looks pretty damp and unsettled, but rainfall amounts will be lighter than what you saw the last 24 hours over the panhandle, but it'll stay wet and cloudy and cooler there, at least through tomorrow. Uh, for much of the southeast coast, uh, chance of showers in the north, really isolated showers along the north Gulf Coast, if any occur at all. There is a chance of some isolated thunderstorm activity over the Wrangell Mountains, maybe the extreme eastern Alaska range. And a weak trough keeps shower chances in the forecast for the eastern Brooks Range, eastern north slope areas. High pressure, though, results in low clouds and fog along the Arctic Coast. Light winds as well, and that light wind condition continues over the Bering Sea, but you can see that ridge uh, kind of washing out now over that area uh, along the area there and the front weakening as well not much gradient with it at all so winds no longer a factor uh, light rain fog and drizzle as the front weakens there spreading into the eastern Aleutians trying to push into the Pribilofs by afternoon another trough keeps it uh, cloudy wet with low flying conditions drizzle and rain out over the western Aleutians there and moving on to the Forecast for Monday, that front continues to really wash out. You can see the precipitation field associated with it becoming a lot more broken, getting holes in it. Light rain, fog, and drizzle is about it. And uh, for the Alaska Peninsula, and pretty intermittent for the Pribilofs, looking at just widespread IFR out in those areas. And showers, fog, light rain, drizzle over the Aleutians and southern Bering Sea, so really scattering out towards Shimia. Chance of showers, a little cooler, maybe a little more clouds in over uh, the Kenai Peninsula Cook Inlet area, the so Sitna Valley on Monday. Chance of showers, mostly over the, uh, right over the mountains of the Western Alaska Range into Northeast Bristol Bay. 
Chance of showers, a little bit better chance uh, Monday afternoon for the Kenai Peninsula. The way it looks at this point in time, those will be light and only act to keep the temperatures maybe a little cooler. And for Bristol Bay, or for uh, the North Gulf, eastern North Gulf Coast, periods of light rain with that low off the coast. And it stays again cloudy with uh, some moisture over the panhandle, but another sunny day over much of interior Alaska with highs back into the 60s and 70s. <clears throat> Lows for tonight in the 40s, lower 50s across all of the state, mostly in the 50s for the panhandle. Mid to upper 30s, Arctic coast. And then highs tomorrow, 40s for the Arctic coast, 50s to lower 60s from the north slope, south of the Brooks Range, 70s. In some cases, mid to upper 70s around the central interior, and 75 to 80 again for the Susitna Valley, well into the 70s, Kenai Peninsula, Bristol Bay, near 70 Kodiak Island. High lows the following morning, about the same, uh, 40s to lower 50s over the interior, followed by highs on Monday. Mid 70s, Central Interior, Cuscombe Valley, and 65 to 75, South Central Alaska. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic for Sunday morning. IFR, north of the Brooks Range, on out to the Arctic coast. South of the mountains, though, mostly VFR, uh, except for the Kobuk, Selawik Valley there, some IFR to start. Marginal VFR pushing in to the uh, Yukon Cuscombe Delta up to the, uh, almost to the Cusco Mountains there, definitely into the Southwest Mountains, and uh, IFR, St. Lawrence Island, Ninevec Island, Perbolos, in across the Western Yukon Delta, and mostly IFR for the Aleutians, uh, marginal VFR there for ADAC, and VFR, Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, all of uh, Southern Alaska, and marginal VFR possible along the Eastern Alaska Range, mostly the Wrangell Mountains on down to the Eastern North Gulf Coast, Northern Panhandle, IFR, Southern Southeast Coast. Sunday afternoon, IFR, uh, at least the Southern half of the Panhandle becomes marginal, and VFR, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, Elfin Cove right on the edge of the marginal VFR as well as Juneau and uh, Yakutat on the eastern side of some marginal VFR for the eastern North Gulf Coast. Should stay out of the Valdez area. And marginal VFR again, uh, eastern Alaska Range, northern Wrangell Mountains, but VFR over the interior, IFR right along the Yukon Delta Coast and over the central eastern Bering Sea and another batch out over the western and southwest Bering and Western Aleutians uh, from about ADAC on westward. Less IFR on the Arctic Coast, fact, becoming VFR on the west side there, and the north slope gradually improving throughout the afternoon. And then for Monday morning, looking like uh, IFR, central eastern Arctic coast, uh, Brooks Range VFR, western north slope VFR, VFR all the way through the interior, right down to the uh, Kenai Peninsula. Kodiak Island got some marginal VFR slipping up on the southern areas and up the east side there, Shelikoff Strait staying VFR, and IFR pushing into western Bristol Bay and staying off the north coast of the Alaska Peninsula, but pretty well socked in over the Bering Sea, central western Aleutians IFR. Uh, Nikolsky may be marginal, and for the afternoon you'll be, go to IFR there, and maybe some improvement front Alaska Island, otherwise uh, Bering Sea Aleutians pretty much IFR. St. Lawrence Island though marginal, and uh, kind of touch and go there through the Bering Strait, and not too bad for the eastern Arctic coast with uh, the lower conditions along or right off the coast. VFR in the interior, and the North Gulf Coast, uh, we've got some IFR, and then into the coast range, marginal. Marginal over the southeast coast. Passes, Sunday, Anatovic and Anagan, both another VFR day coming up, uh, both entrances. Lake Clark and Merrill VFR, both uh, eastern and western approaches. Rainy VFR, windy, same forecast, VFR. And another VFR day for Isabel. Mintasta, a little more uh, marginal there. Uh, trending toward marginal VFR, depending on the uh, buildups, locations of the showers and isolated thunderstorm activity. Otherwise, not too bad. Tanita, though, VFR. And Portage, looking good. Uh, VFR skies there. Chilkoot and White starting out marginal with uh, improving to VFR for the afternoon, and uh, freezing levels showing uh, really warm air mass out to the west there. Central Aleutians 14,000 feet with 12,000 feet extending north-northeast all the way up to the Bering Strait, 10,000 feet uh, just north of Kivalina, and 8,000 feet or 8 to 12,000 feet across central southern Alaska, and a little bit of a pretty good gradient actually across the southern panhandle in Queen Charlotte's. And icing could be some 
considerable moderate rye micing early on, kind of shifting eastward there or northward into the southern panhandle, and then possible uh, icing threats over the eastern brooks range of a mixed variety, and then some rye micing there. Not too bad, but uh, considerable moderate pushing to just west of the Pribiloffs. And for the jet stream, strong southerlies, 100 uh, to 125 knots right in across the panhandle there. And then northerlies on the backside of that trough uh, across Kodiak Island, uh, 85 knots, 65 knots there over the Talkeetnas, high pressure along the west coast, uh, another low out west. And that'll bring 40 knot winds from the south southwest to the central Aleutians, turn southerly and extend northward there, just west of St. Lawrence Island. And the stronger winds will be south of the southeast coast. So moving on to uh, turbulence there, we've got some light to uh, isolated moderate chop developing over the southern panhandle and then considerable moderate turbulence there, mechanical turbulence, Kodiak Island, Shelikoff Strait, uh, Kamishak Bay, maybe Southern Cook Inlet there through the Barren Islands and also considerable moderate for the western Aleutian areas. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecast. We have a big solar flare coming in, so we're out here on an aurora hunt. It's a CME, it's a dynamite, a coronal mass ejection. It's when the sun, it kicks off energy and these explosions that are larger than the earth explosion type things coming off of sunspots. And if that energy is pointing straight at the earth, it gets caught up in our magnetic field and that energy, electrons, come down our magnetic field, collide with oxygen up there about 50 or a couple hundred miles high, and that's what generates the northern lights. My job as the photographer and the aurora hunter is to be in position, you know, location, location, location. And I like to think uh, I'm composing. Uh, Mother Nature, it's a bit of a teamwork thing, you know, she's got to put on the show, but I have to be in the right position and of course with the right tools and the know-how. Um, I've stopped keeping track of how much time I spend out here in terms of hours. It's more in terms of uh, weeks or months or at this point years now. You know, it was always in me. Even when I was a kid growing up in the lower 48, I would spend nights sleeping on our trampoline, just staring at the stars. I'm in fourth grade and I'm going, wow, look at those stars. <laughs> and I'd see how many nights in a row I could sleep on the trampoline. And I think my record was 23 nights in a row. So I was doing kind of strange things for an Iowa country boy. I can remember specifically the very first time I saw the Northern Lights. It was 1989, the peak of the solar cycle, and I was going to graduate school in Laramie, Wyoming. And all of a sudden we had heard the Northern Lights were out. It's like, what are those? I'd never really seen them before. And my goodness gracious, we were on top of a mountain in the Laramie Range and they were turning blood red. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And the very first picture I took, that was 1990. Now, an old film camera, Pentax K1000 on a plastic Kmart tripod. Took two shots on slide film and got them back. And I thought, oh my gosh, this beautiful green thing swirling about. And from that moment, I was hooked. When I realized that you could preserve the auroras on film, I just experimented a ton. I, I'd had a, a heaping stack of, of slides, the no good ones, the experiments gone wrong, you know, too dark, uh, fuzzy, out of focus, too light. I had this huge garbage can full of, of excess slide film and that was just the learning curve. Well, when I go out here, um, it's all about getting the shot. And uh, we, my wife and I, we've called it the hero shot. But the hero shot is the one where you just come home and you go, look at this. And everyone goes, wow. And you're, you feel like a hero. It's a, it's a wonderful feeling, you know, it's always, it's good for the ego, of course. It's good for the business. But if you kind of strip that away, it's just, it's good for 
what's inside you because that's really the hero moment in nature. And Mother Nature's putting on this show that is just mind blowing. It's unbelievable. When I first resigned from my day job, that was in 1996, and decided I wanted to become a full-time Aurora hunter, my goal from, from that moment and to this day still is to get one hero shot a year. I figured, and I'm talking the kind that you somebody wants to buy from you and hang on their wall, where the Auroras are extremely bright, very active, turning colors, where you can't believe your eyes. If you're gonna preserve a little sample of that with a photograph, uh, well, it's what we call the hero shot. Wow, what a feeling. I mean, oh, you're just, you're, you're elevated, levitating, you are lifted up. Your spirits are so high that uh, I love that feeling, and I think I get that so much from seeing cool things in nature that I will go way out of my way to, to find that. And I can, you know, the next day, well, I'll be just laying there thinking about it and thinking how lucky I was or how fortunate. Uh, of course, I just, you know, spent two weeks sitting there staring at the sky and not seeing anything, so you gotta remember that, you know, luck is kind of a relative term, but I still just feel incredibly lucky to be even in a position to where I could have been there, taken a photograph of it, and just mainly experienced it. Well, that, that feeling could last for days. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis of complete August, 15th August, uh, of course, this year. Uh, not, again, not much change from what we've seen in the last few days, and no big changes expected over the next several days. A little uh, movement of the ice field expected to occur with uh, slow melting continuing. Coastal water forecasts on the south coast, south to southeast winds, 10 to 15 knots, 6 foot seas, and variable 10 for the north coast with 4 to 5 foot seas. Lynn Canal, look for a northerlies of 15 knots, and southeast 10 for Stevens Passage, double that for Clarence Strait, 20 knots out of the southeast with 4 foot seas. Monday, southeast 15 for the central and northern inside waters with 3 foot seas, south 15 knots for Clarence Strait. And the south coast, small craft advisories due to eight foot seas there, otherwise south to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots. Definitely small craft advisories on the north coast as those east southeast winds increase to 30 knots, seas build to seven to nine feet. Prince William Sound tomorrow, south winds are variable winds, 10 knots, slight seas, and for the north Gulf Coast, variable winds at 10 knots with uh, four foot seas. Barren Islands northeast at 15, and northwest 20 knot winds for Kachemak Bay, Cook Inlet northerlies at 15 knots with five to six foot seas. Swinging winds around to the south southwest on Monday, pretty light though for Cook Inlet, 10 knots, northeast 10 for Kamishak Bay and the Barren Islands, and east 10 for the western north Gulf Coast. For the eastern north Gulf Coast, northeast winds 20 knots, three foot seas northeast at 10 for Prince William Sound. Kodiak Island, northwest winds, uh, lighter tomorrow, 15 to 20 knots, four to five foot seas. And for the Alaska Peninsula, from Cape Sarachev to uh, Sitkanak, northwest winds, 15 to 20 knots. Bering Sea side of the peninsula, lighter and more southeasterly at 10. Bristol Bay, northwest at 10. Outlook for uh, Monday, Alaska Peninsula, southeast winds, 15 to 20 knots. Bristol Bay, southeast 15. Kodiak Island, southeast winds, only 10 knots, including Shelikoff Strait. Fox Islands, uh, south to southeast winds, 20 to maybe 25 knots at the highest with five to seven foot seas. Southwest 15 to 20 for Adak and Atka. And Chitka Island, south 20, and then Kiska to Shimia, south winds, 25 knots and nine foot seas. And on Monday for uh, the area from Kiska to Shimia, northwest at 28 foot seas. Amchik Island, west 20 knots, and Adakanatka, west 15 to 20 knots. And for the uh, Fox Islands, west-southwest winds, 15 knots with three to seven foot seas. 
For the southwest coast, look for northerly winds at 10 to 15 knots for the day Sunday with the strongest, uh, although not that strong, at 15 knots south of Nineveh Island with 2 to 4 foot seas. Southeast winds 20 knots with 11 foot seas for St. Matthew Island, about the same for the Pribilofs, but the seas only at 5 feet. And for St. Lawrence Island, look for southeast winds at 15 knots. Seas running about three feet. Light variable winds for Norton Sound. And then those winds for Norton Sound will uh, pick up a little bit on Monday. Out of the east at 15 knots. Southeast winds 15 knots, St. Lawrence Island. And uh, all of the southwest coast with seas three to six feet. And for the purple off, southeast winds 10 knots, four foot seas. East winds at 15 knots. There for St. Matthew Island with seas at six feet. And for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, uh, not too bad in the winds tomorrow. Northwest, 10 to 15 knots with 2 to 3 foot seas. Central coast, northerlies at 15 knots with 3 foot seas. And then east winds at 15 knots uh, for the uh, western North Gulf Coast all the way to Cape uh, Thompson. And then really light winds out of the east at 5 knots with slight seas from Cape Thompson to Wales. And then for Monday, Wales to Cape Thompson, south winds 15 knots. Otherwise, we're looking at easterly winds at 20 knots for the entire stretch of the Arctic coast, with the exception of the area from Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, and they'll be southeast at 10. And for denied high pressure up that er in that area, an eastern Bering Sea will make for light wind conditions, low clouds and fog possible anywhere in the area there. Otherwise, stays fair over all of interior Alaska with diminishing winds in the windy areas that, had, that saw the winds today. Those will be coming down considerably overnight tonight. Risk of a shower lingers over the eastern Copper River Basin, Wrangell Mountains, and stays wet over the panel, but lighter rainfall amounts and that front weakening as it pushes eastward. Into the eastern Aleutians, some light rain, fog, and drizzle tomorrow trying to push into the Pribilofs. High pressure weakens off the west coast. And another sunny, warm day over the interior, 60s and well into the 70s, maybe even 80 again. This is Sitna Valley, stays wet over the Panhandle, both uh, Tuesday or Sunday and into Monday, but rainfall bounce will be lighter than the last 24 hours. Another sunny day over interior Alaska. High 60s to mid 70s, maybe even upper 70s. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.